a story? I have a good one. Let's see. Where has the chickadee landed today? How Robin Hood met Little John. This story is adapted from Henry Gilbert. Have you ever heard of Robin Hood? Once Robin Hood was journeying through the forest of Bonsdale, when he came to a broad stream crossed only by a narrow beam of oak. It was wide enough for only one man to cross at a time, and of course it had no railing. Robin walked two or three feet along it, when on the other bank a tall man appeared, and jumping onto the bridge also began to cross it. They stopped and they frowned at each other when they were about some ten feet apart. Where are your manners, fellow? Robin called. Could you see I was already on the bridge before you placed your great big feet on it? Go back. Go back yourself, acorn head, retorted the other. The small jack should always give way to the big pot. You're a stranger in these pots, you chucklehead, said Robin. Your cherished brown betrays you. But I'll give you a good Barnsdale lesson if you don't retreat and let me pass. Saying which, he took his bow and drew an arrow. The tall man, with a half-angry, half-humorous twinkling as I glanced at it, If this is your bonstable teaching, he rejoined, it is the teaching of cowards. Here you are with a bow in your hand, ready to shoot a man who has only his walking staff for a weapon. Robin paused. He was downright angry with the stranger, but there was something honest and good-natured about the giant which he liked. Have it your way, then, he said. Wait here. He turned and went back to the bank where he cut a stout staff in his hand, and he trimmed it to the weight and length he desired. Then he jumped back on the bridge. Now, said Robin, we will play a little game together. Whoever is knocked from the bridge into the stream shall lose the battle. Ready? Go. With the first twist of Robin's staff, the huge stranger could see he had no novel, novice to deal with. He soon found that Robin's arm had strength equal to his own. For a long time their staffs whirled like the arms of two windmills, and when they clashed a crack of wood tossed to and fro between the trees on either side of the stream. The stranger lunged, and his stick came down with a sharp rap on Robin's skull. First hit goes to you, cried Robin. Second hit to you, said the giant with a good-natured laugh, rubbing his new bruise on his left forearm. Quick as lightning, the bros, blows descended now, and the very bones of each man were rattled. Keeping their footing on the narrow bridge was almost impossible. Every step forward or backward had to be taken with great care, and the power of every blow they gave or received almost threw them over the side. Suddenly Robert landed a blow on the big man's crown, but the next instant, with a furious stroke, the stranger struck Robin off balance, and with a mighty splash the outlaw landed in the water. For a moment the giant man seemed surprised to find no enemy before him. Wiping the sweat from his eyes, he cried, <laughs> Hello, good laddie, where have you gone? He bent down anxiously and peered into the water flowing rapidly beneath the bridge. By St. Peter, he said, I hope the bold man is not hurt. Faith came a voice from the bank a little farther down. Here I am, big fellow, as right as rain. You have the day, and I shall not need to cross the bridge. Robin pulled himself up the bank and kneeling down washed his face with water. When he rose, he found the big stranger at his side dashing water over his own head. What, cried Robin, have you not gone forward on your journey? You were in such a hurry to cross the bridge and now you've come back? Scorn me not, good fellow, said the big man. I have no way to go. I know I am but a serf who has run away from his manor, and tonight, instead of my warm hut, I have only a brush to sleep under. I would like to shake hands with you before I go as you are a true and good fighter as I've ever seen. Robin's hand was on the others at once. They gave a handshake of mutual respect and liking. Stay a while, said Robin. Perhaps you'd like to supper 
before go wandering. With these words, Robin placed a horn to his lips and blew a blast that woke the echoes and made the blackbirds fly, shrieking away. And every animal in the forest, it dove for the nearest cover. Then came sounds as if deer were hurrying through the bushes, and in a moment the forms of men emerged from all the dark of the trees. Why, good Robin, one called, what happened to you? You're soaked to the skin. Tis no matter at all, laughed Robin. You see that tall lad there? We fought on the bridge with our staffs, and he tumbled me in. Seize him, lads, Robin's man cried, springing toward the stranger. Toss him in and duck him well. No, no, shouted Robin, laughing. Hold back, lads. I have no ill will for him. He's a good fellow and bold. Listen here, my man, said, he said to the stranger. We're outlaws, brave, brave lads who hide here in the forest from the evil lords. We make our business to take from the rich whatever they've stolen from the poor. Join us if you will. I can promise both hard knocks and good cheer. By earth and water, I'll be your man, cried the stranger, seizing Robert's hand. Never heard I sweeter words than those you've said, and with all my heart, I will serve you and your fellowship. What is your name, good man, asked Robin. John O. Stubbs, replied the other, and with a great laugh, but all the men call me John the Little. Others laughed too, and they pressed forward to shake hands with him. When they raced back to camp, there was a great iron pot waited for them over a fire, from which rose the most appetizing odors for men grown hungry, hungry in the greenwood air. Standing around John the Little, who overtopped them all, the outlaws held their mugs to a great wooden cask to be filled to the brim. Now, lads, cried Robin, we will baptize our new comrade to the good free company of the forest lads. He has now been called John the Little, and sweet baby he is, but from now on he shall be called Little John. Three cheers, lads, for Little John. How they made the twilight ring, their leaves Overhead quivered with their shouts when they tossed their mugs and gathered round the cauldron. They dipped their bowls into the stew and fell to feasting. Wow, I'm sure you've heard of Robin Hood and maybe Little John. And now you know the story of how they met. And sometimes consequences that seem like they wouldn't make you good friends, they can make us good friends. Always look for a good friendship to come out of something. I want to read another one about friends, new and old. You never know when you're going to encounter a new friend, but always make sure you don't lose the old. It's a little poem called New Friends and Old Friends. What really endures is a true friendship as other kinds of love. It says, make new friends, but keep the old. Those are silver, these are gold. New made friendships like new wine, age with mellow and refine. Friendships that have stood the test of time, time and change are surely best. Brow and wrinkle, hair, may grow, hair grow gray. Friendship never knows decay. For mild old friends, tried and true, once more we our youth renew. But old friends, alas, may die. New friends must their place supply. Cherish friendship in your breast. New is good, old is best. Make new friends, but keep the old. Those are silver, these are gold. I hope you enjoyed our little story about friendship and our little poem about friendship. Friends are very, very important. I hope you treat yours right. Well, that's our story for today. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll have another one next time. You be good, and we'll see you then. Mm -hmm.